Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we have two young women who are going to talk to us about setting your reading goals in 2019. Our first guest is Blessing Okwafu, who is a chartered accountant and an internal auditor with over five, nine years experience. She's passionate about reading and today she, she's going to tell us how she read 136 books in 2018. Thank you for joining us, Blessing. Thank you for having me. And on my extreme right, I have the co-founder of Robin Hyde Books, who has pursued her passion for reading and making it available for Nigerians to be able to have the books that they want on the go. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having day. me, Olive. First of all, I must say congratulations to you, Blessing. 136 <laughs> you. books in 2018. Yes. That was amazing. Thank you. Toby, how many books did you read in 2018? Uh... I did about 50. 50? Yeah, uh, he did well. Oh, you, well. Yeah, <laughs> not as much as you so did. I, I guess at the end of the day, it's just, you know, we're not, it's not a competition. Exactly. It's just the fact that you're sure, making sure. a progress. Mm -hmm. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Of course. Making efforts, reading baby steps. So I'll start, before I come to you to tell us okay. how you did your 136 books, Toby, you ensure that Nigerians have books that they want mm -hmm. on the go. How was the reading culture, the average reading culture of Nigerians in 2018? Um, of course, it still leaves much to be desired, but in 2018, I must admit that it really got a boost. It was way better than it used to be. I mean, we have um, a large following online, and then beyond that, we saw that so many authors, so many people are beginning to see a need to share their own story, which of course makes more materials that are relatable available for Nigerian populace to read. And then a lot of people are hungry for knowledge, and then more and more people are beginning to see a need to actually invest in themselves. So, so many more people have been reaching out to us, and on the average, I would say we're not where we used to be. Like. I mean, being an author, this day seems to be like a lucrative thing to get into. And that's the reason why you have so many celebrities and more and more people getting on board to tell their own story. And also, it's pretty much way better than it used to be, I must admit. I feel like 2018 was the year of authors. You know, lots of celebrities of went into the sure. author space, the right book writing mm -hmm. space. We have mm -hmm. the Omonia Bolly, Betty Rabot, Betty Rabo, yes. Tosin Olori Supergirl. Girl. Adenike, our own yes, Adenike yes, Oyetunde, yes, of yes, course, yes, yes. and many more women, mm -hmm. you know. But it does seem that we had lots more women telling their stories here. Or is it that I'm, I'm unaware of the men telling Maybe their women stories? women are just natural storytellers. We like to dream, <laughs> we like to talk. So, I mean, yeah. perhaps that explains it. And we're a bit more expressive. And um, perhaps it's time for more men to come forward. And I think there are a few other male authors that came on board that we're failing to mention. There's um, F.G. Fagure. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and then I um, I also think that it was there's this guy that his book is really doing well right now. Yomi Jamie Benwo, and um, and all these are not autobiographies, are they? Um, mostly because most people sort of want to share their experience okay. and you know make impact basically. All right, blessing. Let's speak to you. Okay, 136 books in 2018. Yeah. How did you do it? Oh well, uh, for me reading is a passion. Yeah, so, and then I read that uh, every time I can, you know, I'm in a, at a doctor's office waiting for my appointment, I'm reading a book, I'm at lunch, I'm reading a book, you know, so just before I go to bed, I read, you know, so still all the, all the little moments I can get to read, so that's, that's how I did it. In your post that you put out, you said yeah. you did 136 books. You wanted to do more, but then you're a mother and you're a wife, and then you, yes. have, you have a career. So that kind of you know, slowed down the process. How were you able to give us practical examples you know, of times when you still had to incorporate reading, reading into your daily schedules, knowing that you still have babies to look after, and then you still have a husband who wants your attention, and then you still have work to cater to? OK, so um, basically. I, I read um, on multiple devices at the same time. So I have uh, books on my laptop. I have the paper backs. I have books on my phone. So if I go anywhere, um, I have a book with me, basically, everywhere I go. So those um, waiting times, you know, those moments where you're probably, you know, waiting for something, you're thinking of something, you know, just before going to bed, you know, there's any break in work, any break in, even maybe feeding my child, my baby, mm -hmm. you know, using one hand to feed and reading a book and another. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's, it's called multitasking. <laughs> I mean, all mothers do it. Wow. Yeah, so, so 
So basically, that that is it. So my fathers yeah. are not yet even mothers. We're <laughs> not able to do this. No, I'm sure. I'm, no, you see, there, I, I think there's a, there's a kind of grace that comes with motherhood that you just find yourself doing some things that mm. you thought you could not do. So there's not how you would be a mother and you would not have to multitask. Do you, you just think? Learn it. Do you think that you being able to read this number of books is because you've always been an avid reader? Is this something yes, that you're born with? Is this something that you can learn, or is I it a mix of both? I think it's I think it's more of learning, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so um, in my during my early childhood, at some point in my early childhood, we didn't have television in my house, mm -hmm. so the next option was to read. Yeah, so that was the, my entertainment. That was all I you know could use to keep myself company. So you know, and once you do you do things over and over again, mm -hmm. it becomes a habit. You get better at doing it. You know, because I should mention that I also read very fast. Yeah, you know, because I read a lot. I've been reading a lot through the years. So I read very fast. So that also helped with completing uh, those number of books last year. So, so it's something you can learn. So, you know, you keep doing it, you get better at it. All right. We'll come back to still looking at practical tips on how we can break them down. I also want to ask you about your favorite authors, but let's ask Toby. Toby, you, you are the one that sells books. You are a bookseller, quote unquote, yeah. all right? Okay, what were the highest selling books in 2018? You are the bookseller. You are the ones that people contact for books. Yes, so where, what were the books that sold the most? What kinds? Fiction, non-fiction? If possible, give us names. Okay, it was just a, fic a mixture of both, um, fiction and non-fiction. I think top on our list for non um, for fiction is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Ade. Oh, yes. Yeah, the book did amazingly well. I mean, the PR behind it was fantastic. So a lot of people were really interested in reading the story. Then there was also... Um, What's the name? Trevor Noah's um, Born a Crime. It's a memoir that shares a story from perhaps grass to grace and life in South Africa and all of those. Then um, this book, Walking on a Dream by J. Fagbure, also was amazing. It's also a memoir. I think a lot of Nigerians sort of like identify more with personal stories, memoirs, and autobiographies more generally. Then um, there's also 29 Single and Nigeria by a pseudo author called Niger, Niger Single, Single Girl. Girl. I think I just have to, you know, fans <laughs> that one because I'm a Niger Single Girl fan. I follow her on social media. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love her so much. I love yeah, the work that yeah. she does. And I think she's one of, yeah. she's a very brilliant writer. Yeah. Okay, um, we'll still look at your favorite books in 2018. Well, let's go to the, male, the main meat of this conversation. Okay. Give us tips on how we can, now you've, you've also mentioned mm -hmm. using your time, your waiting time, any free time you have, you know, just having your books on multiple devices so that you can multitask. Are there other practical tools and tips that you can give us to achieving our reading goals? Yeah, so I should have mentioned, the first thing I should have mentioned was find out what interests you, mm -hmm. what you like to read. Um, J.K. Rowling said something about if you don't like to read, it's because you have not found the right yeah. book. So, you know, this, determine what it is that interests you. If it's memoirs, if it's fiction, if it's, uh, you know, motivational books, get what it is, you know, then you can start with that. So you build your, you build the reading habit with what interests you. Then after that, you can now decide, okay, you know, I need to go further and read other stuff and, you know, just develop myself. But the first thing you, you have to do is to find what interests mm -hmm. you. Read, you know, get to read them, get, um, Find out how you can access them easily. I think this is yeah. a very practical tip. Find mm -hmm. out what interests you. Read them a lot until you've built the habit. Yeah. Then you can veer off and start reading other things. Yeah. So what interests you, Blessing Okofo? Fiction. Really? Yes. So lots Fiction. of the books you read, out of the 136 books, how many were motivational yeah. books? Okay, so I would say about, uh, I think about 18 or 20 okay. motivational books. So <laughs> they're mostly... Well, well, not motivational, non fiction. Self -help. Self -help. You know, self-help, motivational, memoirs. Business, uh, not so, not okay. so much, yeah. What have you, what, what, what interests you? What were the, you know, uh, the large bulk, the large chunk? What made up the large memoirs, chunk of the series? Memoirs, memoirs. Really? I wanted relatable stories. I wanted human experiences that I can identify with and would sort of like validate my journey too as an individual. Then I did a bit of business books as well because perhaps I run a business and... I also wanted to make a bit of progress on that. Then fiction, you want to take a break from legal stress and just exactly. go on a journey. 
transport yourself to a different world, world entirely mm -hmm. and then fix your effort to do that. So okay, I wasn't so going... nobody here is really a self-help book enthusiast or a motivational book enthusiast, but I'm glad that our next guest falls into that category. I dare say that John Obidi's favorite genre of books will be self-help books, motivational <laughs> books, course. Gary Vaynerchuk and the rest of them. But thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank you. 30 seconds each. What is your, what is the one reading habit we should all avoid in 2019? Procrastination. Um, try and make time for it, even if you're only able to take in about two chapters a day, even if you're able to take like taking just a chapter, just make sure you're investing in this and you're letting something in every now and again. Yeah. Brilliant. And yours? Uh, <clears throat> I would say um, getting stuck on an uninteresting book. Avoid that because that would slow you down. Yeah. So if it's not interesting you, Move on to another one that would interest you. Yeah, life is too boring to be stuck with it. You life know? is too <laughs> short, short to be stuck, to stuck with a boring, boring book. book. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, they say that we travel <laughs> the length and the breadth of the world and the pages of books and some people's experiences, they would share in their books. You don't have to always learn from your experience. You can learn from the experience mm -hmm. of others by going through their books. That way you walk the path that they've walked. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your tips with us. Mm -hmm. In 2019, we are going to read how many books? Oh, well... I'm looking at 50 because I have some things. Wait, so really? <laughs> from what I'm going to 50. <laughs> okay, well, on? okay, so I'm reading academic books this year. This year. Okay, yeah, great. So and what's your target? I'm trying to do 100. 100? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You will find out my target at the end of 2019. <laughs> I'm not going to set myself up. To enjoy more of this, our Ugunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.